Hi guys, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Voice of Eden TV. If this is your first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video, and most likely drop a comment so that YouTube algorithm is going to show this video to more people. So I stumbled on a video on YouTube done by Akinlade Ibuoye. I hope I pronounced it well. Popularly known as Gaze Baba. And I think that that video is very important for today and now because we see a lot of gospel ministers who believe in Jesus, they preach the gospel, they sing the gospel, but yet they are suffering with what we are about to watch right now. And they cannot speak out or talk to people and say, this is what I'm going through. I need help or this is what can I do to get out of this? And I think Gaze Baba shared a lot of things in this video that can help everyone who is going through the same thing come out of it, all right? I'll read something for you right now to just let you know who Gaze Baba is in case you are hearing Gaze Baba for the first time. I think the first time I came across Gaze Baba was when he released the song Elijah Level. Ah, that song. <laughs> when I heard him, that was when I knew about him, and that was when I started following him. So he recently started a podcast on YouTube tagged Black Flames, and in Black Flames, one of the very first episode he did was how he got in and out of porn. So Gaze Baba, he's a polymath, an entrepreneur, and an award-winning Afrofusion artist who performs in Yoruba, English, and the West African lingo is pidgin. He has his first degree in economics and holds a diploma in music business from Berklee College of Music. Beyond writing and recording and performing music, he's a founder of social impact platforms that serves youth audiences and communities and the nation at large. Some of these include Light Out, an initiative that tours high school, leveraging music and art to engage and support students in their educational, social and personal development and has reached over 2,900 teenagers and preteen students. He is also the founder of Aramanda, an Afro-urban music and art festival that connects young Africans to alternative Christian sounds and genre and expression. So you see, Gaze Baba is not just, he didn't just come out yesterday. He has been in the game. He knows what he's doing. So when he's saying something, I think you should listen to it. All right, so let's just jump into the video and then go through it and I'll make my comments as we watch the video. My room, and then I started to grow in him. So when that phase of my journey, so I've explained how I got into porn. When that face of All right, so that's the part of the video I skipped. How he explained the way he got into porn from TV, all right? DSTV and then later um, Twitter, right? Twitter app. Strange, right? Yes. And then I know some of you got into porn by maybe your friend introduced you or your brother introduced you or someone introduced you. But he got into porn from TV, DSTV, just watching um, some raw parts of those movies, rewinding them or taking them to the part where they had sex scenes and all of that. That was how he got into porn. Let's continue. So I then became a Christian. As you say at this point, I mean, just based off of my own understanding and my experience, you're not a Christian because you're born into a church going home. You're not a Christian because you attend church. You're not a Christian because you're in the choir. You're not a Christian because you're a deacon. Because this day self, Orishi is in the deacon. You're a Christian when your entire life is yielded to the Lordship of Christ. Powerful, powerful. You're not a Christian because you're born in a Christian home or because you carry a Christian title. I'm a deacon, I'm a reverend. He said you are a Christian. Let's take that back. Deacon. <laughs> you're, not, you're a Christian when your entire life is yielded to the Lordship of Christ. He said you're a Christian when your entire life is yielded to the Lordship of Christ. I think that is powerful. It does not matter if you were born in a Muslim family. You become a Christian when your entire being is yielded to the Lordship of Christ. When he makes the call for your life. 
when he tells you where to go to. So it doesn't matter if you go to church, read your Bible. If God doesn't have the say over your life, if he doesn't have dominion and direct you on where you should go and where not you should go or tell you what you should do and you listen to it, then you are not a Christian. Accept that, all right? Accept that you are not a Christian. So, yes, you are born again. You have, you know, believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he came and died, took your place and all of that. But then you've yielded your life and journey. You everything about your you life, to life and so journey. So it directs your path. It directs your life, right? That's what makes you a Christian. Yeah, that's cool. So by this time, I had then become a Christian. This was September 20, 2003 started to grow in God September and started to struggle with what I had become addicted to. Okay, so let's say this. He got addicted into pornography before he became a Christian, right? And then he said when he became a Christian, he started struggling with the things he got addicted to before he became a Christian. And I think that's the case for a lot of us. Maybe not every one of us, right? Some of us met this addiction even when we when we had given our lives to Christ. Some other people struggle with, it, with this addiction before they met Jesus. And now coming to meet Jesus, you think everything would just go away to become a roller coaster. And it doesn't always happen like that. So he started struggling with those addictions he took before. Before he met Jesus. Right? 2003, 2004, 2005. Two I years. was in, I got into OAU studying economics. So I remember any and every time I would sleep, that's like watch content I shouldn't watch. I would feel bad. Maybe I would get sunk into it till like 2 a.m. or sometimes 3 a.m. Wow. And I'll go to bed. I'm feeling like horrible. The guilt is massive. And I can't, I sleep like that. I wake up, I can't pray. I can't read the word. I can't do jack. And my journey in music interestingly started in 2000 and late 2003, early 2004. So by 2004, when I started my journey as gays, as a musician, I was not professional yet, but I was already like singing here and there, some churches or some schools and some places. I got into Ife, into OAU Uni, and I was doing the same, singing his fellowship, singing his concert at Amphitheater and all of that. All that period was when I started now struggling and trying to find how to stop and how to put a stop to it. Yeah. And... I remember that I would feel good counting how long I've, I've abstained. This is profound. I think he shared something here that blew my mind. Because one of the things he said before he even started talking about him having to count how long he has stayed away and he will feel good anytime he counted. Maybe I've stayed away for three months, four months. He just feels good is that he said that every time he does that, every time he sleeps or falls, he spends so much time thinking about how messed up he is. He can't pray the next day. He can't do anything. And I know that's the same case for you, all right, where you get to that point where you feel like I can't do anything because I had done, I've had i done this thing or because I said I did the same thing I said I would not do again. It's the same thing for all of us, right? So, but let's go on and listen to some of the things he shared. Or how long I've stayed away from porn. So I'll be like, man, it's been six months. Like, yo, it's been eight months. That kind of thing. But I'm in school. <laughs> Just not as if there's TV there. Wow. And then maybe something happens. I come home, maybe my sister's house or somewhere. Doing school. And then I sleep. Like I it fall falls. Into it again. And then I'll feel bad. I will not pray for like one or two days. And, you know, all of that was going on. Pari Pasu, my journey as an amateur musician, just performing. I didn't record anything. And this possibly went on, you know, I could go a year. Later on, it was no longer TV. 
Because no longer like DSTV or TV or any such thing. It, it then became social media. There are just some handles that some people just bring to you, your TL. And once you see the handle, you know that this handle is funny. Can lead you here. How Twitter right? contributed and they have all this to the pornography. Obscene content on the platform. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I slip into that. And then I have to like pull myself back and pray and try and bring myself back into like right mm -hmm. standing. So whether it was four months or 10 months or one and a half years or whatever. The point where my freedom came and I, I specifically call it that was when I encountered. No, he said the point where his freedom came. Let me say something. It is one thing for you to be set free and it is a totally different thing for you to be made free. What happened is that sometimes there are certain conditions that set you free. But when you are made free is when your mindset, not just your being, your mindset is entirely changed. Now, if you read the story of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, what happened was that the Lord set them free. But through the journey through the wilderness, God's intent was to make them free, was to change their mind. So he's saying... He had some little, little victories along the way where he was, he, he was set free from this thing. I mean, you get to the point where you cannot do it for, you didn't do it for three months, one year, one and a half year, and he was feeling good. But he said sometimes he will still fall back to the same thing. And now he said, getting to the point where he was made free from this thing, where the chain didn't just break, the mindset changed entirely. That is what he wants to tell us right now. My freedom came, and I, I specifically call it that, was when I encountered truth. I was at a conference, I don't remember the year now, maybe 2015 or 2016. Ah, no. Between 2016 and 2018, it was, it was, it was Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar spoke at a Wavbeck. And he spoke on the identity of the believer. That singular message changed my life. It was the very first message Crypto Dollar preached at Wafbeck. I was in the hall and I couldn't write anything. I was just I was just soaking this message in. By this time I was married. So when I got married, I mean, before I got married, I told my wife, I mean, well, both of us are naked and not ashamed. By naked, it means that your entire life is before the other person. The other person's entire life is before you. So no secrets, nothing. You just keep yourselves accountable, all that, all that stuff. And it was both, you know. And, but there was this understanding that I got the number one thing I think did was I stopped counting time <laughs> so before I was finding my like freedom comfort or deliverance or proof of deliverance in how in long you stayed how away. long I had stayed away <laughs> yeah from Porn or porn related content. Yeah, I was there too. You know, what this understanding did for me, and it, it's the understanding of my identity in Christ and the fact that, and the truth that I am already the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It is not my behavior that determines my identity. My identity is found in Christ and my behavior then catches on to my identity when I am resolute in my understanding and my knowledge of who I am in Christ. 
I, I think I think you need to listen to this over again. He said it is not your behavior that determines your identity. He says your identity determines your behavior. Your behavior catches up to you knowing, you know, I told you that true deliverance is not being set free, is in your mindset, is knowing, knowing who you are, knowing who you are. And he said that's where it started from where Creflo Dollar was speaking, and he taught him about who he is, your identity in Christ Jesus. And that's what the devil use, uses most of the time to bring us down. He tells us, you have done this. This is who you are. You are you are this. Someone shared something that blessed me, and he said, the devil doesn't call you by your name. He calls you by your sin. All right, the two men that died beside that was hung on the cross. They were called two thieves. They, they had a name, but we don't know their name because the devil addresses you by your sin. He knows that this is who God has called you to be, but he wants to make you feel miserable. So he calls you a thief. He calls you a fornicator. He calls you a masturbator. He calls you a porn addict because you are caught up with these things. So he said he stopped got he stopped looking for his identity or his peace from how long he has stayed away from this thing but from knowing who God has called him and who he is in Christ Jesus. So let's continue. It it just changed I don't know how to explain it. It it just changed my entire life and how I interacted with sin or how I saw sin or the fruits of sin, or the manifestations of sin, yeah, the expressions of sin. I wanted to, talk, I wanted to deviate into something, but it's not now. Another time, we'll talk down, right? And and it was so liberating. Now, folks will think that that message uh, um, would encourage sin. But me, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm like a testimony because it's not for it's not for people in sin. It's for people in Christ who find themselves falling, falling into, into sin, sin. Yes, because they are trying not to fall into sin. Note that people in Christ who find themselves falling into sin because they are trying not to fall into sin. <laughs> This is great. This is great. Now, let me say something. The Bible says those who, it is what your heart is full of that your step follow. So if you want to walk in the light, you have to be mindful of the light, right? So this is what he's saying. You have to stop being sin conscious and start being righteousness conscious. You have to let go of being conscious of the fact that I may fall, I may not fall, and be righteousness conscious, be full of the fact that you are full of the Spirit of God, and you are the righteousness of God. Be righteousness conscious. And sometimes people say when you preach this message, a lot of people will fall into sin more. No, we are not talking about people like he said, people who are not in Christ. It is people who are in Christ and keep falling into sin because they are trying not to fall into sin. I, I did a podcast sometime and I said, stop trying to please God because God is pleased with you. And a lot of people said, ah, this message is not a, it will lead people to sin more. No, God is pleased with you. You are his child and he's already pleased with you. All you need to do is to feed your mind with the thoughts that you are the child of God. You are full of the righteousness of God. You are full of the help of God. You carry the spirit of God and you will live above sin. In fact, you would not have the time to think about the fact that you might sin or you might not sin. All right. So this is, I'm almost coming to the end. So let's just wrap things up quickly. I stopped trying not to fall into sin. I started embracing and understanding who I already am in Christ. So the first thing, initially, maybe the first months or a few years or whatever, maybe I just still fell a few times. The first difference was it never took me two days. Like when you are down in guilt and grinding. I like and you're this. Just like, uh, I like you are this. More, you are more disappointed in yourself than God is. Do you understand? <laughs> After understanding, if I 
ever fail. The first place I was going was God's it's presence. God. God. The first place I was going was God's presence. So if I was feeling bad, I take that bad feeling to God. Yes. If I was feeling unworthy, I, I take, take that, that unworthy, unworthy feeling to God. God. If I was feeling disappointed, I take that disappointment to God. Yeah. No error ever drew drew me far away from God again. Yeah. As I share this with you now, I, I don't know, maybe two years, three years, four years. I do not know because I am no longer sin conscious. Yeah. I'm now God conscious. I'm my identity conscious. Right? So I'm not keeping tabs of... All right, guys, I think this is where we'll stop this video because of our time. But you get the point that he has been trying to explain, like you get it. Understanding who you are in Christ Jesus sets you free from everything. I said, it's not about the fact that you didn't do it for three years, two years. It's about the fact that your mindset about who you are has entirely changed. You now know who you are. So even if you don't do it for five years, it's not because you have been trying to abstain. Is because you now know who you are. It's not because you have you have carried out some measures. Okay, I'll stop pressing my phone. I'll buy a touchlight phone. I'll I'll stay where people are. I will not stay where people are. All of that. They are great precautionary measure. But understanding who you are is the number one and most important of them all. All right, guys. Thank you. Like, subscribe. I put the link. Um, to the entire video on my description below so if you want to watch the entire video just check my description below and you'll see the link to the full video god bless you i'll see you in my next video don't forget to like share and subscribe shalom bye